morning HPC. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our God, Yahweh is one. That prayer was such a, contains a, such a foundational truth that Jews would go on to recite it for the next 3,500 years. And as Andrew Wilson says, just as it was foundational to the Jewish faith, there is nothing more foundational to us as Christians than the truth that the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And this truth rejects polytheism, the belief that there are many different gods. And this truth was spoken into the context of polytheism, into the idea that um, that there was a God in charge of every single disparate aspect of the lives of people, that there was a God of uh, this nation, a God of that nation, uh, that there was a God of rain and of harvest, uh, a God of um, fertility, a God of um, war, a God of storms, all of these different elements of God, and, and cutting across this understanding is the one that has been central to uh, Christianity and to Judaism and to Islam, that there is one God. Now, the strange thing, of course, is that if you've been paying attention, uh, the idea of the Trinity seems to cut across this idea. The New Testament affirms that the Father is God, that the Son is God, uh, that the Spirit is he is God, and yet at the same time that there is only one God. Jesus, for example, quotes this verse when he is debating with the religious leaders in Mark chapter 12. And Paul continues to teach that there is only one God while saying that Jesus is the human divine mediator between God and man in 1 Timothy. And because there is only one God, idolatry, the worship of anything else, is evil, foolish, wrong and harmful. Worship robs God of the glory and the devotion that he alone deserves. Now, idolatry, we instantly think of bowing down to, um, to, to man-made statues, and that is certainly part of it. But the idolatry that we are more prone to is slightly more subtle. It can take many, many different forms, but the idea is that something else competes with the ultimate loyalty that belongs to God. I like this summary. It's taking a good thing, because almost invariably idolatry is taking a good thing and making it a God thing. Making something that has been created and, uh, and taking it and looking for meaning and purpose uh, and satisfaction and identity and protection from that thing when in fact we should be looking past that thing to the creator for all of those things taking a good thing making it a god thing taking a created thing uh, and making it an ultimate thing that's idolatry according to jesus money can be an idol and that's that's something which i think we need to wrestle with we need to recognise that either having lots of money can be a result of our idolatry or not having lots of money can be a result of our idolatry. Lusting after someone else's money or more of our own money can be, an idolatry, can be idolatry. Greed and lust and sexual immorality can all be indicators of, of idolatry, that our hearts are chasing after, are seeking satisfaction in something other than the, the one God. Idolatry is foolish deceptive, dangerous, and according to the Bible, devilish. So because there is one God, he alone should be the source of, he alone should be the, the, the target of my heart's soul affection. He alone deserves allegiance and obedience. And the great commandment that follows this verse in Deuteronomy chapter 6 is one of the obvious implications of the Lord being one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Come straight after the, 
the truth that the Lord our God, the Lord is one. He deserves everything we have, nothing less. He deserves our wholehearted love because nothing compares to him. It's no wonder that so often in uh, in our services that having heard this truth, we are moved to repent because we fail to love him, heart, soul and mind. Why don't you take a moment to do that now? Have a really good day, HBC.